Imagine waking up one morning in 2026, turning on your computer, and realizing that the operating system you're using doesn't just feel different. It feels inevitable. It feels like something the industry slowly drifted toward without even announcing it. Something that quietly solved problems people had stopped believing could be fixed. That's exactly the moment many users are going to have with Linux, and more specifically with one Linux distro that keeps appearing in conversations across forums, YouTube comments, developer meets, and even among everyday users who once swore they would never leave Windows or Mac. This isn't about Linux finally catching up anymore. This is about Linux setting the pace, and the distro that embodies that shift more than any other is Fedora, particularly Fedora with its modern desktop experience built around GNOME and cutting edge technologies. For years, Linux adoption has followed a predictable pattern. Enthusiasts and developers jump in early. Productivity users follow once things stabilize and the mainstream stays behind, either out of habit or fear of incompatibility. What's changing now is that the reasons for staying behind are evaporating one by one. Windows has become heavier, more intrusive, and more cloud dependent. Mac OS remains polished, but increasingly locked down and expensive, tied to hardware ecosystems that many users simply can't justify anymore. Meanwhile, Linux has been quietly doing something radical, making itself boring in the best possible way. Stable, fast, secure, predictable, and respectful of the user. Fedora sits right at the center of this transformation, acting as the bridge between bleeding edge innovation and real world usability. What makes Fedora so important is not just what it offers today, but what it represents for the future of desktop computing. Fedora is where many of the technologies that will define Linux in 2026 are being refined before they spread everywhere else. Wayland as the default display server is no longer experimental here. It's mature and smooth. Pipewire has unified audio and video handling in a way that simply works without users having to understand what's going on under the hood. Flatpak has redefined how desktop applications are distributed, making app installations safer, cleaner, and far more consistent than the dependency nightmares people used to associate with Linux. These aren't theoretical advantages anymore. They're practical, daily benefits that regular users can feel. When someone installs Fedora today, what they notice first is how modern it feels. Not flashy in a gimmicky way, but clean, fluid, and intentional. Animations are smooth, even on mid-range hardware. Touchpads behave the way people expect after years of using smartphones and laptops with precision gestures. High DPI displays just work. Fractional scaling is no longer a hack. Fonts render crisply. Power management on laptops has reached a point where battery life competes with, and sometimes beats, Windows on the same machine. For a long time, Linux desktops were criticized for feeling like collections of parts stitched together by enthusiasts. Fedora feels like a product, and that distinction matters more than people realize. Another reason Fedora is positioned to become the distro many people switch to buy 2026 is trust. Fedora is sponsored by Red Hat, which means it benefits from enterprise-grade engineering without being locked into enterprise constraints. Fedora itself remains free, open, and community but it also acts as the upstream testing ground for technologies that eventually land in Red Hat Enterprise Linux. That gives Fedora a unique balance. It's progressive, but not reckless. New kernels, new drivers, and new desktop features arrive faster here than in many other distros, yet they're usually polished enough for daily use. For users tired of waiting years for improvements on other platforms, this pace feels refreshing instead of stressful. Security is another area where Fedora quietly outclasses mainstream operating systems. So Linux is enabled by default, providing mandatory access controls that most users never have to touch, yet benefit from constantly. System updates are atomic and reliable, reducing the risk of breakage during upgrades. Secure boot works without drama. Firmware updates are integrated directly into the system through FWAPT, something Windows users often take for granted, but Linux users once had to handle manually, if at all. In a world where privacy breaches ransomware and data leaks dominate headlines, Fedora's security model feels less like a bonus and more like a requirement. What truly accelerates Fedora's rise, though, is how well it fits into the changing nature of work and creativity. Developers already love it because it ships with recent compilers, libraries, and container tools like Paint Toolbox. And these, these tools allow users to create isolated environments for development without polluting the base system making Fedora ideal for both professional software development and hobbyist experimentation. But now, creatives are discovering it too. Video editors, designers, and musicians 
are finding that Linux software has matured rapidly, and Fedora provides a stable, low-latency foundation for creative work. Pipewire, in particular, has been a game-changer for audio professionals who once avoided Linux entirely. Gaming, once Linux's weakest point, has become one of its strongest arguments. Thanks to Proton, Vulkan, and relentless improvements in GPU drivers, most Windows games now run on Linux with performance that's often indistinguishable from native. Fedora's up-to-date kernel and Mesa stack mean gamers don't have to jump through hoops to get the latest optimization. Steam works out of the box. Game controllers are recognized instantly. Even antiseat support, once a deal breaker, is improving steadily. For gamers frustrated with Windows updates, interrupting sessions, or background services, eating resources, Fedora offers a leaner, more focused alternative. There's also a philosophical shift happening, and this is where Fedora's importance goes beyond technical features. People are becoming more aware of digital ownership. They are questioning why their operating system collects telemetry by default, why ads appear in system menus, and why basic features increasingly require online accounts. Fedora, like Linux as a whole, rejects that model. The user owns the system. There's no forced sign-in, no hidden data collection, no artificial limitations. That sense of control resonates strongly with users who feel alienated by the direction of mainstream tech companies. Education is another sector where Fedora's influence is growing. Schools and universities are adopting Linux not just to save money, but to teach students how systems actually work. Fedora's documentation, transparency, and alignment with industry standards make it an ideal learning platform. Students who grow up using Fedora or similar distros won't see Linux as an alternative. They'll see it as normal. By 2026, many of those students will be entering the workforce bringing their preferences with them. One of the most compelling reasons Fedora is likely to become the distro people switch to is that it doesn't try to imitate Windows or Mac OS. Instead, it confidently defines its own workflow. GNOME's design philosophy focuses on minimizing distractions and encouraging focus, which aligns perfectly with modern productivity habits. At first, this feels different, even strange, to users coming from traditional desktops. But after a few days, many realize they're getting more done with less effort. Workspaces, keyboard shortcuts, and search-driven navigation create a flow that feels natural once learned. Fedora doesn't chase familiarity for its own sake. It offers a better way, and that confidence is contagious. As hardware evolves, Fedora is ready in ways many operating systems are not. ARM support is improving rapidly, opening the door to a new generation of efficient, powerful devices. Fedora already runs well on laptops, desktops, servers, and even single board computers. This flexibility means users don't have to change operating systems when they change hardware. The same knowledge carries over, reinforcing loyalty and reducing friction. By 2026, switching to Fedora won't feel like joining a niche community. It will feel like making a sensible decision. Friends will recommend it. Tech channels will feature it not as an experiment, but as a daily driver. Businesses will deploy it on employee machines without fear. Parents will install it for their kids. Retired users will appreciate how it just works without nagging them for upgrades or subscriptions. Fedora's success won't come from marketing hype, but from quiet competence. Why this matters goes beyond Fedora itself. If a large number of users switch to Fedora, it sends a message to the entire industry. It proves that open source community-driven software can compete with and even surpass proprietary giants. It encourages hardware manufacturers to improve Linux support. It motivates software developers to release native Linux versions of their apps. It shifts the balance of power back toward users where it arguably belongs. The story of Fedora is ultimately the story of Linux growing up, not losing its flexibility or freedom, but refining it into something approachable without compromise. By 2026, many people won't switch to Fedora because they want to be different. They'll switch because it's simply the best tool for the job. And once they do, they may wonder why they didn't make the move sooner.